All right, so one of the problems you face if you're going to shoot video or take photograph um, in Australia is the light is very harsh, right? So I've just set up this tarp very loosely and I'm going to show you this belt that I've made in a second just under the shade so we can get a little bit of a closer look at it. Um, but I got um, really obsessed with belts, right? And I'm quite mean, literally the word obsessed. And I was going in stores and looking at what they had. I'd done a whole heap of research into belts and not just in the sense of looking at other YouTube videos of how people have made belts, but I really went back and looked at some of the old writings of some of the real sort of, um, you know, classic Australian leather crafters, like people like R.M. Williams and another guy who's really interesting called Ron Edwards from the 80s, right? Who wore a lot of really good stuff on leather craft. Um, and just kind of looked at traditionally how they did it, how the old bushes uh, did it in the past, how, how a belt was made traditionally, right? And I've just gone for a real classic design, okay? Uh, and I've tried to go for really high quality materials, local materials, right? And just, you know, really good, well made, classical uh, design belt, alright? And this will be a permanent feature uh, in my store, right? The word bushy. Uh, over here in Australia, that kind of means somebody who spends a long time in the bush, right? Like a woodcutter or a hunter or whatever, right? So bush is just a general. A lot of the stuff that's made today, right, is just not very good, has to be said. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you go to Sydney or Seattle, right? You will always find uh, some really dodgy hardware put on leather belts, right? Just to save money. Uh, so this came off a cheap. Um, oh, it just broke off there. Uh, so this came off a cheap belt, right, and just no good, right. It's just the substandard metal. As you can see, the tongue broke very easily there, right. And, um, you know, the fact that you can move the tongue with your hands tells you, you know, the metal's too soft, right. So this is a, you know, you can just tell by looking at it, really badly made uh, buckle. It's just essentially to look good long enough to get out the shop. All right, and after that, nobody cares, right? So, uh, not suitable for what I'm trying to do. All right, um, here's another buckle, right? And this one's not quite so bad. This would be a standard up, and this came off a secondhand belt that I bought in a local market for a couple of bucks. All right, and I actually bought the belt uh, for the buckle because the buckle looked okay. Um, you know, so I just saw this belt and I thought, oh, yeah, maybe I could use. Uh, the buckle, you know, and here's the uh, here's the leather, all right, which is uh, actually made in the USA, all right. Um, so it's more of a fashion type belt. So it looks like it's a girl's women's fashion belt, and they've put um, more of a man style buckle on it, probably just for fashion reasons, right? And it looks okay, you know. If I was to just just in the video and the camera and photography, it looks okay, right? But um, it has a horrible plasticky feel to it, right? And it's some kind of coating. And I got a little bit of a file and I filed away. And underneath, it's that same kind of mild steel that the other one was made of, right? Um, so it's marginally better. This one's made in Taiwan. Um, it's marginally better, but it's not really high enough quality uh, for me. All right, the tongue is not as bad, but still could be a little bit better. Okay, so it's not brass, it's pretending to be brass, okay, and you know, it's a substandard product. You know, fly, come on, fly. Um, so you know, no good, right? Okay, if we're going to make a traditional handcrafted belt, um, we really need a good buckle. Um, this was a local supplier, local leather craft supplier, uh, and this is actually not bad, could be better. But um, the thing I don't like about this is antique brass, all right? And I think the real deal, um, just like this, all right, is nicer. And letting it age naturally and become like this naturally is better than starting off with this kind of aged finish, all right? So this is solid brass, but they've kind of put this finish on it um, to age it, which I don't really again it's an aesthetic choice but personally I don't like uh, but the downside of this buckle is just yet again the tongue 
and they do this with a lot of buckles, right? It's the tongue, it's just too weak. It's just, it's, you know, and that is, with the hardware side of things, with the metal, that is the thing that will fail first, right? Um, you can have other problems with your belt, right? Uh, that when it wears out, but uh, from a hardware point of view, right, you want a stouter tongue than that, right? Um, so this is the buckle I'm using for the bushy belt, and as you can see, it's solid brass, right? Okay, these are made in the USA, and it costs a few more, few more dollars, right, to do this, all right? Um, and obviously, it adds to the price of the belt, but I'd rather use a really good solid brass buckle that's going to last a long time, uh, then go off eBay and you'll get something like that for 90 cents with free postage all right that costs three times more four times more but it's just worth it because it's a quality product that will last a long time um, so solid brass and you can see there with the buckle we have a really nice solid buckle they come with this little uh, this thing at the end this is sort of like a plastic thing sort of a type of condom or something uh, just to stop it scratching okay but um, as you can see solid brass you can see the thickness I mean, you can tell you touch it and you can feel it and you can feel the quality you know it's a quality piece of hardware right that it's going to be hard wearing and um, so that's the style i'm going to use for the bushy belt in the future i'll probably make a few other styles of belts and use different styles buckles and um, this is the same manufacturer just slightly different style you know really nice buckle again all right i got really excited when i got these in the mail because they were so good you know, I was really surprised. Uh, unfortunately, there's just nowhere in Australia where it makes this. Um, so I had to go to the States and, and get it. And I've done a lot of research. I looked at a lot of shops um, throughout the world. And there's just nowhere. This is just the best that I've found. There's just nowhere in Australia that makes this anymore. So um, I'm just using a high quality product imported from the US of A with the flies today um i don't know every time i come out i get try and shoot a, a film and i get a fly on the lens um so yeah the bushy belt right so i talked a little bit about buckles and just the materials used right well obviously the other thing is the construction of the belt and how it's made and again this just comes i mean this is nothing new right you know people have been doing this since you know um almost the vikings you know what i mean but um there's a certain way to make a belt. Um, there's a few things in the detail that really kind of like you, you know, you should try and do. Uh, and one of them is the holes, right? Okay. So if you notice the holes in this belt aren't round, all right? So they're little oblong shapes, right? And that's quite deliberate, right? Because simply the tongue here, it sits better, right? You know, it just sits better. And they're actually supposed to wear better. Uh, in the long term if you do them like that that's not to say you know if you do a round hole that's wrong it's just if you've got the punch to do a little oblong sort of hole right that's, that's the best way to do it you know it's just hand detailing finishing uh, again that's that thing try to do it as best as I possibly can right so we've got a high quality leather we've got a, a camel based tallow treatment beeswax treatment all right and then just with the construction, I mean, very simple, very classic. There's a lot of similar things out there. Um, you know, little keeper here, and then we're hand sewing, okay? Um, a couple of things, right? So hand sewing, I think it's 16 stitches in, tall, in total with this belt, right? Um, some belts you see, the stitching will go the other way, all right? Uh, but I've learned that this is a stronger bond right and if you do the stitching the other way that's okay for a fashion belt or a going out belt or something like that but for something that's a little bit tougher more of a work belt a bush belt you want to go this way right so this is the traditional way of sewing pony stitching right uh, where you use two needles back and forth right uh, and if this gets damaged in any way right you know for whatever reasons you know what I mean um, it won't unravel very easily, right? It'll tend to stay where it is, right? So it's very, very tough bond between this, the buckle, right? Holding it on and the leather, right? It's a very, very strong bond, okay, with the hand sewing, right? And this would easily take the weight of an adult, right? You could easily suspend yourself, all right, with this sewing, right? Um, very, very yeah. strong. 
Um, I don't know when you turn into an old man, uh, but um, this is just the kind of thing I find interesting. I find brass buckles interesting, I find leather interesting, uh, you know, copper rivets, right? I get excited about these things, right? Um, and what I do, I put a lot of passion into this stuff, this gear, right? And, um, you know, nobody's going to make a lot of money out of this stuff, you know? Make enough to buy, you know, a few six packs of beer, whatever, right? Um, I do it for the love of it and the passion of it, right? And part of that is your feedback. Um, and if you, you know, have got ideas or you can see things done better or you, whatever, right? Um, let me know and interact, right? Uh, positive or negative, right? Um, certainly, getting a bit of feedback from you guys is uh, makes my day, basically. Do you know what I mean? Um, do you know what I mean? when people take time to just leave a comment. But anyway, waffled on enough. I pack up all this stuff and head out of here and um, send this uh, belt off to Charlie, man. <laughs>